Well, despite running for years, jury duty scams have staying power because they prey on a fear of law enforcement. The News 10 anchor Sylvia Masters spoke to a local woman who almost fell victim to this scam. One woman wants to share her story and hopes others will be aware of this jury duty scam. This con successfully uses threatening calls and intimidating emails to scare people into paying up. I told him that I could take care of this. What was my fees? He told me $8,175, and that's when I kind of lost it. I, I, I really had it teary-eyed, and um, I asked him, I said, that's just, I, I can't come up with that kind of money right now. He said, well, ma'am, you have to because they're going to come and arrest you. Those words coming from a scammer using intimidating and threatening tactics. Michelle Rayborn received an unsolicited call on her phone from a caller claiming to be with the local civil clerk's office. He told me his name was Sergeant Greg Mitchell and that he was calling to inform me that I had two warrants for my arrest for missing jury duty. I told him it didn't sound right and I asked him what address I was supposed to get this summons from. He gave me my correct address. The caller stated Michelle needed to clear up a bench warrant that was issued for her arrest for failing to appear for jury duty. I explained to him that I could come down to the courthouse and take care of this, but it would take me a couple of hours. He said, well, ma'am, you can't go on the courthouse lawns because you, it is a federal warrant and they'll handcuff you and arrest you. That's when Michelle wondered how she could have missed jury duty and attempted to ask questions. The caller spoke very fast and threatened her with arrest if she couldn't pay the $8,175 fine that day. And he gave me a phone number. It was a Lafayette number. Um, this man didn't speak foreign to me. Um, he sounded like a Lafayette native. We know they're spoofing phone numbers, so a lot of times they're going to be very convincing. Um, but talking to a friend or family member, sharing the story, trying to get in touch with the actual authorities, that would be the first couple steps to trying to figure out, is this legitimate or not? After hours of despair, Michelle realized it was a scam. I said, what, where are you calling me from? And that's when he hung up. Here's how you can spot this scam. Be skeptical of email and unsolicited calls. Courts don't typically summon people via email, text message, or phone. Courts normally communicate through mail. Pick up the phone. If you ever question whether you need to appear in court, call the appropriate judicial agency. Ignore calls for immediate action. Scammers try to get you to act before you think by creating a sense of urgency. Be aware of requests to pay via wire transfer or prepaid debit card. Ask someone for help. If you can ask a family member or friend, just ask them, does this sound right? If you have a scam you'd like me to investigate, feel free to send me an email at smasters at klfy.com. In the studio, Sylvia Masters, KLFY News 10.